Before I start mincing words, I need to say this just outright. When it comes to physical strength, Steve would absolutely atomize the Emperor of Mankind, but this is more, a lot more, than just raw strength. I think when we discuss a 1v1 like this, it's important to start by remembering that we are doing the equivalent of smashing action figures together, and whatever one we like more is going to win, without a question. This is an opinion piece, not facts. Well, there will be a couple facts in there, but again, those are still opinions until someone comes up with new measurements. So for now, objectively, we can say that Steve is stronger than the Emperor. For reference, Steve can actually carry infinite mass. A water bucket, aside from being on the low end, 4 trillion pounds, is actually infinite. I'll link the video on screen in the description now, but it's going to show you just how many water source blocks you can get from a single water bucket, and it is truly millions and millions of blocks. We also know that you can use water bottles infinitely without bringing the water level down at all, so Steve can and does carry infinite weight. The weight of the bucket was extrapolated by calculating just how many blocks of water can come from a single bucket by tracking its downward flow. But by not assuming Steve is an actual creator deity of a setting, let's just put some math into it. By converting water buckets into ice, we get roughly 4 trillion pound ice blocks. Multiply this by 64, and you get a stack weight of 256 trillion freedom units. But if you multiply that by 9, you get the packed ice stack weight, which is 2.3 quadrillion pounds. Multiply that again by 9 for a stack weight of blue ice, which is 20.7 quadrillion freedom units. Now we get to multiply that by 27, and we get the shulker box weight of 559 quadrillion freedom units. That is just the measurement of one shulker box, and that's important because that is what Steve is going to be punching with today. Since it is at the moment, or to my knowledge, the heaviest object he can hit with. This would be a moderate sized hydrogen bomb every single time Steve punches. And if he gets a critical or extra velocity behind his punches, entire continents will be leveled. But that's just one of his hands, it gets much crazier. If we multiply that by 37, we get the total combined weight that Steve can run, jump, and swim with for a combined total of 20.683 quintillion pounds, or for all the correct people, 9.39 quintillion kilograms. And that's not even the craziest. Steve, while carrying 20.7 quintillion pounds, can, with a fishing pole, lift another 16 quintillion pounds, or 7.5 quintillion kilograms, for a combined weight of just about 36.7 quintillion pounds, or just under 19 quintillion kilograms, without slowing down at all. I'll put wing conditions at the end so that way I can just breeze through and mention the endings and move on easily, and for the guy who commented a while back and said that my video structure was shit, this is for you, I'm not gonna organize this video at all. So we have to remember that physical strength can only go so far. The Emperor was fighting someone who, before being empowered, was a demigod. His son, Horus, or really one of his chosen generals because he doesn't really treat them like his kids. Then. That demigod gets empowered by the four primordial gods of the setting, and the emperor manages to endure all of this suffering, all while not receiving the veneration and faith that empowers him 10,000 years down the line. Granted, he is receiving some faith from, I believe it's Yvrady Yvr Keeler? I might be mistaken. I don't know. I, a lot of names in 40k. Granted, Horus did overpower him with the chaos buff, he still managed to endure all of that pain, all of that suffering. This battle was fought over multiple dimensions, as well as the physical. So Horus would beat his ass in the physical world, and then they would go play chess. And it's not just normal chess, it's 5D chess with time travel. This brings up the important mention of how much of the Emperor's might was psychically or psyker related. Since the battle between Horus and the Emperor took place throughout a whole heap of dimensions and universes, they fought on a physical plane as well as a corporeal plane, they played a whole bunch of card games, they played the 5D chess with time travel I mentioned earlier. On a somewhat related note, this is more like tangentially related, the Emperor's appearance or his visage is a psychic apparition itself. We know from the lion that the Emperor is just a dude. With the lion, he walked into a room and saw multiple Primarchs talking to just this normal, average-sized man, and a frame later, it was the Emperor who looked at the lion and, you know, confirmed what he saw. This could be another one of the Emperor's lies where he's, you know, showing one part of his aspect of himself. I'm not sure how to word it truly, but let's 
let's get back to the video so much of what makes the emperor the emperor is a psychic projection that it just can't be separated from him for the sake of the 1v1 let's just say that the emperor isn't allowed to just give him the dr manhattan and atomize him on the spot it has to be a physical confrontation otherwise it would be a three second thing I think the best comparison of Steve and the Emperor is that the Emperor is an immortal guy who is role-playing as totally not a god who sets out to civilize and purge chaos from the galaxy, while Steve is an immortal role-playing as a god who sets out to tame an eternal cube and destroy all the quote-unquote chaos, which in the case of the craft ends up being the deep dark, the end, and the nether. Which, side note, the nether is 250 billion degrees celsius, so, I mean, just endurance aside, Steve wins there once more. Both are also surrounded by the ruins of those who came before and have to piece together ancient technology to save humanity, or in the case of Minecraft, the villagers, which are the closest analog to the humanity or whatever. Another thing, and the main joke behind this video, arguably one of the Emperor's biggest accomplishments is the defeat and imprisonment of a shard of a Catan, that Catan being the Void Dragon. Now, you can say that's a full Catan, but even our beloved emperor couldn't beat a full Catan, that's a stretch. Either way, there is some Catan juice in Mars, but Steve has the emperor beat there by a considerable margin. A YouTuber named Sandiction managed to capture three Ender Dragons, meaning that he, at the very least, is three times stronger than the emperor. I don't want to read any salt in the comments, Steve has for sure captured three dragons that are alive, mind you, as well as being able to kill or imprison those entities on the level of a dragon. Now I know for a fact that the Shard of the Void dragon would be considerably stronger than a single Ender Dragon, but if Steve is able to capture three Ender Dragons at the same time in the same place, that has to at the very least be equal to the Shard or whatever how much juice of the Void Dragon is sitting in Mars. I know a lot of people think that the Ender Dragon is a slouch, but remember that they are capable of destroying any block not native to the end, regardless of its hardness, and all of this, while being able to phase through solid matter. Not to mention, they can throw a 20 quintillion pound man into the air like it's nothing. So the Ender Dragon isn't a slouch, Steve is just absolutely busted. Steve has access to three dimensions, block space, fire space, which is essentially just super diet warp, as well as dark block space, which is where the dragons be, or the end. Steve wins in quantity, but the Emperor sure wins in quality. The Emperor has the warp and real space, both of those being much larger physically. And I think that's a good point to bring that up because the Emperor wins in quality most of the time. But, as Joseph Stalin said, quantity is its own quality. Now, I have to bring up another very important thing that I didn't know how to slide in here, and that's the Primark project. The Emperor had 18 to 21 sons or generals or whatever you want to call that, and his success rate for his sons was like 40% maximum. Steve over here is practicing the only way to ensure you don't have evil sons that tear the galaxy in half. Abstinence. My boy Steve Seed just doesn't work with anything, and believe me, that is not for a lack of trying. I mean, he for sure has tried planting his seed in every field possible, but his seed just isn't compatible, even with villagers and illagers which are the closest analog to him. Another similarity is that both the Emperor and Steve are collectors. Both Steve and the Emperor like to collect deadly beings and objects from across their world, or in the case of 40k, worlds. I'm not sure if enchanting books count as archaeotech, but that could be another thing that they have in common. And they both really like museums or galleries. And this brings up the quality argument again, where we bring up the Emperor's bodyguards. The custodian guards are absolutely no slouch. They will beat an iron golem probably 10,000 to 1. But that brings up the quantity versus quality argument again. It takes decades or centuries even to craft a custodian. Steve can pop out an iron golem in like 5 seconds. It also has to be said that Steve is capable of animating matter. No, not reanimating matter, just animating. Steve can turn literal rocks and minerals and a plant into two completely different creatures. Steve can pop out an iron golem in just around 5 seconds. He literally creates this life from nothing. But he doesn't have a healing aura quite like the Emperor does. I'm not going to bring up beacons because that's... I don't know, that feels like magic. I think at the end it's a good time to look at the arsenal of both fighters. The Emperor's Sword once again wins in quality, as it is 100% going to be able to kill Steve. It just absolutely kills your soul, rends you from being. 
no go to jail, no pass go, you're just off the board. And you can't really take that away from him, because that's his sword, that's in all of his artwork. Steve, on the other hand, can create near unbreakable weapons. He can create weapons that don't require ammunition, weapons with mending that can fix themselves and are able to turn a trident into a flying machine. The flying machine is important because he can launch himself at the Emperor super fast with Riptide with 30 quintillion pounds in his inventory and hit him with the equivalent of a dark matter bomb or a small asteroid. But that's not my preferred strategy, that's just the easiest strategy to win. Steve's best bet is to just use a fishing pole and launch the Emperor into the stratosphere. Just game over. Why fight when you can just throw the problem at another galaxy? All in all, it's a 5 out of 10 scenario, or a half scenario. Every physical confrontation ends with Steve winning, and any confrontation where the Emperor can use his psychic power, Steve will just be spawn camped. There's no other way to put that. And I know that the Emperor has faster reaction time, but there's really nothing you can do when you're hit with an asteroid. You're essentially both going to be atomized. As soon as Steve comes into the physical world and he hits you, that's it. You're both just gone. Yeah, you're both gonna respawn. Well, Maybe not Steve, because he's going to get hit with the sword and his soul's going to be rended. But, you know, it's going to hurt. It's going to take you some time to figure out where you are and get back home. But yeah, I hope you're experiencing similar levels of brain rot as to I am. Thank you to ZFast and CanMan18 for getting a lot of the leg room out of the way and doing all the math for me. Doing all the physical work of setting all of it up, because I'm lazy. Thank you.